you look at the top 1% of 1% of agents who actually make a million dollars a year, and some of you may think there's only room for 1% of 1%. But it's not. It's available to each and every single one of you. I promise you, 100%. And what they did is they got really, really good at, thank you. <laughs> they got really, really good at one skill, okay? And I want to share that skill with you today. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to just think for a second about all the different ways that you generate leads, okay? Just think about it for a second. What are those different avenues of lead gen? Okay, you got it? Now write them down. Make a list. And the more the merrier, right? Everything that you're doing to try to produce leads in your business. If you're not writing, at the very top of this list, write one million dollars. <laughs> write it down. If you don't write it down, it's not going to happen. You hear these guys, they say, I wrote down, you know, you know, hundred million dollars every day for, you know, 17 years. Well, I wrote down a million dollars. I wrote down the number one million for a long time, every single day, until what? Until I was making a million dollars. You just, you just gotta live this. You have to live it, it has to be your life. Okay, you got your list of, of lead gen activities? Okay, how many have zero? Nobody. How many have just one? Okay, two. Nobody? Everybody has over two. This is beautiful. What, one? Okay, one. One with one. Three. Okay, a few hands. Four. Okay, five. Over five. Five or more. Okay. Now, as you look at that list, all right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What do you guys believe is lead generation for the next generation? Social media, social media, social media, social media. Huh? Follow up? That's like after you get the lead, right? Everything's instant, everything's online. Everything's instant, everything's online. So the way that I read this, Okay, because when they told me to talk about lead generation for the next generation, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm like, do I try to teach them how to attract Gen Z? Or do I teach Gen Z how to lead Gen? I didn't figure it out, so you know what? I was just like, let me just talk about what I want to talk about. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Okay. Efficiency in lead gen, okay? And this is why this is perfect. Most of you are five or more lead gen activities, okay? Efficiency in lead gen is this. The ability to focus on just a few lead gen activities to produce more results in less time, and here's the kicker, sacrificing business in other lead gen areas. Okay, now let me dissect that for a second. The reason we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 lead gen activities is because we're scared we're gonna lose business in all these other ones. We have two or three that are doing really good, but then we're like, oh, we're losing all this business in these others, so we gotta do it all. And guess what? You're not good at anything now. You guys have all heard the saying. When you, when you talk to a top producer at the end of the day, They've, they've become the top of their market, and they were, you know, a beast for a long, long, long time. And you say, how did you do it? What's your lead gen, right? How many lead gen activities did they, do they say? One, two, three. One. One. 
Yeah. More than likely, it's going to be one thing they're like, oh, well, this is the thing that really was the thing for me. Right? Um, mine was circle prospecting. Because guess what? When I got into business, guess what? There was no social media. There wasn't Zillow. There wasn't any of this. We didn't even have an iPhone. There was no apps. There was no nothing. DocuSign didn't exist. I had to fax everything. By the time I got it, it I had to get a magnifying glass to see. <laughs> so... Right? I wanted it to be this kind of like a workshop, right? I wanted to really dissect your business and help you become more efficient. So what I want you to do is take two seconds to look at your list and say, you know what? I'm going to scratch all these off but two. What are my two bread and butter lead gen activities? Because that's what you need to go all in 80, 90% of your time. If you want to spend 10%, you know, testing out little things, doing little things, great. You always need to be testing. But the bulk of your stuff needs to revolve around the two legion activities that work best for you. So take two seconds and scratch everything off on that list until you get down to those two. And when we go back to our businesses after this week, what are we going to do? We're going to refocus our business on just these two legion activities. Because guess what, guys? Can you handle 50 pending deals? You can handle 50 pending deals by yourself as a single agent? Okay. What? Maybe. Could you handle 100 at one time? No. There's a breaking point, okay? There's only so many hours in a day. There's a breaking point in how many deals you can process and relationships you can create. This is why, for me, every single person in this room should be doing a video every single day, okay? Disclaimer. I never used social media in my real estate business. Why? I didn't mean to because I understood my cup is full. I'm talking to enough people to do the amount of deals that I can handle. Having 30 active listings and, you know, 15 to 20 pending deals is a great pace for me. I, don't, I didn't really want more than that. And it all comes down to conversation. So regardless of what your lead gen is, okay, regardless. Social media, uh, door knocking, Zillow, whatever it is, okay? And everybody in here wants to make a million bucks a year, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what, it kind of makes my point for me because I don't, I don't think everybody really does. Why? Because of this. The only thing between you and a million dollars a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. It doesn't matter if it's social media. Use social media to get to the conversation. Use Zillow to get, everything should be a platform to get to the conversation. And how many of these conversations can I have, create great relationships with people and really connect, you know, get them into my ecosystem, put them into my database and, and have a system in place where they never forget about me ever. And now guess what? In three years, I'm the number one agent. Thank you, mom. So we have to realize this right here. And whatever we're doing to try to avoid having conversations with people, we're just killing our business and we're putting ourselves in a position where we're gonna have to sell forever. How many of you wanna sell real estate the rest of your life? Oh, that's a shocker. You wanna sell real estate the rest of your ever living life? Okay, and what's so funny about that is nobody raised their hand except for this nice looking gentleman in the back. And, and, and the thing about that is, is that he says he does, but guess what? There will come a time where he doesn't, and he's gonna wish that he would have squeezed all these thousands of conversations into three or four years to get to the million dollars as quick as possible, because guess what? Well, I, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna skip through, I'm gonna right here. The objective of prospecting. To build a database of people so large that you never have to prospect another day in your life. That's the objective of what we're doing. So if you, can, if you can visualize this over the next three, four, five, six, seven years, however long it takes to have those thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market to get to the million dollars a year, once you build the database up to the point that you're making a million dollars a year, you never have to prospect ever again and you continue making the million dollars every single year. Yeah. How do I know this? I did it. 
I know other agents that have done it. Now what do you do? You take the time back that you were prospecting and you invest that elsewhere. Spend more time with the family. Go build other businesses. Do other things. And then what do you call this? What type of business is this? When, when, when deals just fall in your lap. Residual. It's a residual business. Now, why? Because every single relationship that you create in your market is worth 10 to 15 deals to you, 15 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career. See, I'm trying to help you build your career, not your 2023, 2024. Who gives a shit about that? In 2027, okay? In 2027, are you going to care about the money you're making in 2027 or the money you made in 2024? 27. So why are we worried about 2024, right? Let's make it, let's pay our bills, but let's visualize our career of, of really going big by 2026, 27, 28, and living the life we really want to live. Because once we create the, the residual business, then what is the objective of that? To take the money and invest into passive investments such as rental properties, for example. Because if you start thinking about this now, and you start, you just blow through, build your database, build your career, make the money, invest it wisely, now guess what? Now you're selling in 2029, not because you have to, because you want to, because it's fun, because this guy back here will still be selling. But it doesn't sound like anybody else wants to anymore. So I'm just trying to help you visualize that if you take the two lead gen activities that work best for you to have thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with property owners in your market, would you want right now, okay, 30 active buyers or 30 active listings? Active buyers, anybody? Is there one person? Okay, 30 sellers, listings, okay. How many of you are creating social media content trying to attract buyers to your business? A lot of you. But you just said you would rather have 30 active listings and not 30 active buyers. So the question is, why are you creating content to attract buyers to your business? Use social media correctly, ladies and gentlemen. How do you do that? You post every single day. Why do you do that? Because you want to up the engagement, the, the impressions, the profiles that you reach on a 30-day basis. Okay? And the only way to do that is to post consistently. You can't post once a week and have a ton of views for your entire profile. You're doing that because when you go to your next listing appointment and say, hey, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, look at how many impressions I get for the last 30 days. A any agent can put your property on MLS, but I'm going to push your property on my 30,000 uh, impression platform. As soon as we list it, I'm going hard. And so you use the platforms to build credibility with the sellers when you go to listing appointments and create great listing videos to attract buyers. You do want to attract buyers, but to your listings. Don't just attract buyers for fun. Because the thing is, is we're all going to make money at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night. The only question is, are you going to be the one at the house chilling, eating dinner with your family without a worry in the world because eight of your 21 listings are being shown by agents on YouTube and TikTok? Or are you going to be the one out showing the properties? It's, it's your choice. So it comes back to efficiency. How did I sell 100 properties a year as a single agent for eight years in a row? It's because I understood efficiency. And I only want to talk to property owners. I can't talk to them all. How much time do I have? Oh, five minutes till Q&A? We're going to do a Q&A? We're going to do a Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me get through this. You know what the cool thing is about the real estate market? It never goes to zero. Right? Closings will happen every single day for the rest of eternity, regardless of market conditions. This is a chart of the number of transactions of existing home sales in America since 2000. Right? We're right where we are, were in 2008. We're right where we were in 2008, right now. But this is 2008. Now, how many of you have buyers that are waiting on prices to come down? A show of hands. Okay, everybody. 
All right? And you got, you got the YouTube gurus out there saying it's going to crash 30%. Now, how good is that going to be for your business if prices go down 30%? How easy is it going to be to sell houses at 30% cheaper? Dude, the market, the market would just explode. I, the market would absolutely, the system would break if that were to happen. So here's what's cool. In this business, you can't lose. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> if prices go up, guess what? That means a lot of transactions happen and, and you know, more supply happen. If you're talking to the property owners, you're listing the properties, are they selling on a day? Yeah. Inventory still down? Yeah. But a lot of transactions happen. Guess what? You won. Your business won. If prices go down, how hard is it going to be to sell properties at cheaper prices? You win either way. You get it? There's nothing to worry about when it comes to the market, so why do we even care? Well, it's good to keep up with a little bit for your clients, right? But it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, for your business. Don't let headlines scare you. Don't let, you know, YouTubers scare you that don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Just subscribe to my stuff. Listen to one YouTuber. Me. This is a visual illustration of the market. Back 2008, when I got back in the business after losing everything, going bankrupt, sleeping in my car, sleeping on friends' couches, eating out of people's refrigerators, roofing houses, I got back in the business in 2008, and guess what? I'm telling you from experience, you know how easy it was to sell real estate in 2008? It was, it was like, <laughs> buyers were like a kid in a candy store. It was like so many properties and they're all half off. It's like, thank you, Jesus. It was like the, the greatest thing ever. It was incredibly easy, but I maintained my business, right? I kept my head above water, which is what you should be thinking about right now. Just keep my head above water while we're down at these 2008 transaction levels and wait till the market resurges. And that's what happened. I didn't do anything different from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Nothing. Why did my business explode? Two reasons. One, the snowball of creating relationships and never letting anybody forget who I am because I send a weekly email on the same day of the week forever and the market resurging. The market's gonna come back violently. They should have had me on the main stage when they were talking about the market, right? Just kidding. Okay, this and then q and I, I did a training on 30 listings in the next 90 days. I gave you a, who, who watched it? A couple people. Who wants 30 listings before the end of the year? Okay, text me here. I'll, I'll send you the replay of the training session. I laid out exactly how to do it using direct mail, phone calls, and social media. Anybody could go get 30 more listings before the end of the year. New listings are ticking up. What you do right now is gonna define your entire 2024. Right? We, we want to have a great 2024, but we're in this three month like business and we'll wait till January 1st to get started. Well, the work you do then is not really gonna to come to fruition until March. You gotta go now if you want 12 months of full potential business. I, I could scream for hours, so I'm gonna get into q and I know they're probably waiting on me. Thank you guys. <laughs> Q&A, just raise your hand. Got a mic runner. Fire them. <laughs> Just make the calls yourself. Just have the conversations yourself. Three to five years, you're done. We're always looking for the workaround. How do I get out of doing this thing I need to do? We got in the business to help people that we know and don't know buy and sell real estate. Go do your job. I'm a tough love kind of guy. <laughs> mm -mm. Hell no. What, what's that? I'm, if I had agents? Call every single fucking property owner in the world. 
What catches you getting out of you right now? What would you teach you right now? Expired. Two to, two to 18 month old is the sweet spot. Go back 10 years worth. Call them all. Say, hey, I, try, I see you were trying to sell this house. Whatever happened. Bam! You're going to do deal after deal after deal after deal for sale by owners right now. In 2021, you couldn't get any. Why? Because they were getting 15 offers. Now they're pricing a little too high and it's sitting there. They're getting frustrated and they're listing left and right. I got an agent that listed 50 of them this year. But again, again, bro, again, all that stuff may work for me. It may work for that guy. It may work for this person. It may work for that person right? It may not work for you. You can't ask me what lead gen I would tell you to do or what I would do. It's about the two that work for you. I'm not going to say go cold call or do social media or do this or do that. You got to figure out, this is where the work is. You figuring out what works best for you and then going all in on that. One more, right? Or two or three. Text me. Oh, I, did already. I have like tons of training, huh? Right. I'll be on it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I equally do with buyers and sellers. Yeah. Of course. I listen. Let me make something clear. Like I focus on property owners, not because I want to be a listing agent, because they're the highest quality prospects. When they buy, they're the highest quality. They already know what the game is. It's easy, easy. And most of the time they're selling something to buy and it's two deals, right? I'm, I'm not a listing agent. I am property owner focused to help people buy and sell. They're the highest quality prospects. 80, 80, 20% of my business for my entire career is buyers. So then with your social media, your business is pretty much primarily doing the listings and not really focusing heavily on buyers. But in my situation, when I'm focusing on both, mm -hmm. You're, you're, no, you're going to create content to educate the audience, right? Okay, period. You're, you're posting every day to create enough engagement in your profile to show your seller, hey, I'm active, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push, push your property on my platform. Now, you can't create videos every single day where something's not geared towards a buyer, okay? I'm just saying, can we get out of the mentality of, how can I get the people relocating to my market? Let me just list all the properties and let another TikToker sell them while I'm at home eating dinner with my child. That's all I'm saying. Like, just, it's just the mentality. It, here's the thing. You do activities that are listing heavy activities and you take whatever buyers come out of that. If you get a buyer out of social media, yes, go help them. I'm not saying turn them down. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to switch your mentality, just, just a tweak to try to help you become more efficient because it is our choice, whether we focus on property owners or general public or buyers. I mean, I post on every single one of them. Um, and some of them work better than others sometimes, and then this one will slow down, and this one will speed up. Um, I don't know. Uh, Instagram has like been the bread and butter for me. But then I hate to be like, oh, I'm just going to do Instagram or whatever, um, when now my YouTube's starting to really pick up, fixing 100K subs. When you get around 100K subs, guys, the freaks come out, <laughs> just so you know. Yeah, well, most expireds, I believe, list within like three, four months, right? They wanted to do something, hold off, paint something, do something, right? Plus, the flurry of agents isn't calling them right then. I like calling them day one expireds as well. Love it, love it. You're the 15 agent that called, great. Cool, well you had, here comes another one. Like you, had, you hadn't heard from me yet, how you doing today? Let's, let's get to know each other for a second and then we can see where it goes from here. Um, I, I could talk to anybody, anywhere, any place. It does not matter, right? The next thing, 
Can we stop categorizing leads, putting them in different buckets, saying, oh, these are hot, these are cold, these are buyer, these are sellers. These are, uh, it's all the same people. It's people in your market. Talk to them all the same way. Same script. Hey, I'm a realtor. How are you doing today? What can I do to help you? Great. That's what you want to do? Why? Cool. That's why you want to do it? Awesome. Are you already working with an agent? No. Cool. Well, here's the next steps. You ready to move forward? Cool. Let's go. Just fucking do it. That's all I'm fucking saying. Okay? Just fucking do it. All right. Thank you, guys. What? Oh, hey, hey. Everybody wanna be the boss, but it costs, and these lames ain't like me. Drop a couple bands on the.